with us Dr. N. K. Dhaka from uh, Miles Bronson Residential School. Uh, welcome to the science, sir. So to begin with, uh, what do you think about the current education scenario in the country? Because there's a lot has changed from past years, especially post liberalization when internet really came in and really uh, see due to the everyday life and the school system has also been flooded with technology and use of internet. So how do you think this transition has really been? Mainly due to the digital revolution, growth of the knowledge economy, shrinking of the growth, there is really a transformation of a shift in the education system. Earlier, the traditional way of education was based on a policy of intervention where there was a set of rewards and consequences. Now the shift is towards something which is called prevention. Where now the role of the teacher is to sit with the children and form norms for learning and work together. So this change in itself has a change in the matter for Earlier, the teacher was looked upon like a manager, doing something and incentives and rewards were given to the teacher for taking out products. Now it is changed because it has become more of an orchestration or a metaphor, where the teacher has to show his or her leadership skills and work as a team player and a facilitator for that. So I see really a transformation and change. I said by use of technology, what has been the impact on the ground zero? How has it really changed the dynamics between student uh, student teacher relationship or students' learning process? How has it really changed the game plan? Initially when Technology has come last 10-15 years in this revolutionary way, touching all aspects of our life. One generation of students at that time, the standalone computers with the internet and connectivity was not strong in all cases. But gradually, when smart schools are introduced, the communication, the online communication, has become more effective and fast. Uh, we see that uh, lots of changes have come in terms of implementing technology to the classrooms. Now, one is the offline education through computers, the other is the online education. And practically talking about my experience, <coughs> because our school is a very forward thinking kind of school, I founded the school, I the principal also of the school. So very passionate about innovations. So we found the first school of the region to have standalone computers. And now the first school of the region to have entire classrooms with uh, smart classrooms, smart groups. Uh, what I see is that the students and the teachers when we talk about something called learning for all, no one is left to learn. Technology is really helping in terms of reaching out to the multiple intelligence of the children. This I say because see, the greatest challenge for an educator is to initiate the process and achieve what we call self driven driving learning. And self-driving self learning can come only through intrinsic motivation, setting up of goals, having self-control, having a sense of responsibility in ourselves. So this is much possible through the use of technology, because through the digitization of uh, learning. The children can learn at their own pace. And earlier it was 
for the teacher very difficult to take the students beyond the level of knowledge and understanding, little bit of application. But now as the children are learning at their own pace, learning by applying their own multiple intelligences, because learning <coughs> has to happen, if it has to happen, has to have an interplay of all these three factors, that is uh, visual, auditory and kinesthetic. And this is possible, much possible, beyond the teacher's best practices by the use of uh, this uh, smart classroom settings. That's what to say. Technology is somewhere restricted to the niche segments, as in uh, people who can really afford technology, who can build up the infrastructure, have the internet connectivity. But in India, of course, the internet is not really widespread to reach the human corners of the country. So do you think, in, on the hindsight of it, technology is uh, promoting uh, exclusivity rather than you know, bringing in inclusive, inclusiveness in education? That may be, we can say that that may be so if we look back and decade. But now, technology is not that costly. Earlier for a computer we spend 50,000, 80,000 on that for iPads, it has become cheaper. And even the government, uh, to reach out to all sections of the society, uh, all governments, central government, state government, and I see a lot of uh, incentives in nature that they can, by doing free iPads, the doctors, I see in my state a few computers, and this is how the reach out is going, it's not that it's limited to the elite class as of today. And so your school is situated in Guwahati. Do you see any locational disadvantage in terms of accessibility to latest technology or any location disadvantage to the school as such? No, nothing. We are well connected. There is a steep software technology box to be the electronics department. We are well connected. So you'd say we come to a scenario where a school in Guwahati could be as good as a school in Delhi, Mumbai, or any other metro in the country? Yes, yes. Even much interior places uh, is quite, uh, they're quite accessible to the internet. It's not in the internet. And so how do you think the role of a principal has changed over the years in the education sector right now? Earlier the role of the principal was like a manager. He or she has to manage the institution and they were really looked up on as a person of great knowledge, authority and wisdom. Now things have changed. That authority has come down and it has it's been a level playing ground for everyone, for parents, for students all the stakeholders. Now the principle of today, besides the a manager, has also got to be an instructional leader. He has to pay a lot of attention towards the code. That is what is called the instructional code. And the instructional code is that which has close interaction between the three elements, the student, the content and the teacher. It is not that the interaction between two of those, like the teacher and the student, that the content is not there, which you can see in the lower class. Or if there is an interaction between the teacher and the content, students is Students are not there, but they are not actually learning. So the, interact, the instructional core needs to, to be seen that it is interactive. Right. It is interactive all the times. All right, sir. thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thanks.